안녕하세요. Hello. I'm Kim Jingu of the Yonsei Go Dental Clinic. I'm going to talk about the anterior implant placement and immediate loading with one guide system. So, what are the considerations for anterior implant treatment? Typically, depending on timing of implant placement, uh, we have such categorization. After immediate extraction and one week, we call it immediate placement. Placement after one or two months, early placement. And after three or four months, we call it delayed placement. So these are the generally accepted uh, definitions. Immediate um, extraction is most challenging part. And we also talk a lot about immediate loading because just immediate placement is not everything because of their advantages. So we also do immediate loading uh, together and we do that all within a week. So why immediate placement? Uh, as many journals uh, says, after extraction, we have a lot of uh, bone resorption and um, a lot of literature says that horizontal change is greater than vertical in terms of resorption and buccal have more resorption than on the lingual side. So after extraction, we have weaker bone and there is more resorption on the buccal side and more horizontal side. So in this famous uh, article, talked about how the buccal uh, bone is resorbed. First, we have the buccal bone bone resorption, and then on, on the vertical side, and then on the outer surface uh, side is the second phase uh, becoming shorter. And then in 2017, it says uh, labial bone that is uh, thin, less than one millimeter, has more resorption, but with the thicker soft tissue, we don't feel it, but uh, once we place implant, that sort of disappears. So what we can glean from this is after the extraction, if you want to place implant, um, there's a lot of tricky situations and there are no bones left. This is because of the bundle bone theory after extraction. Now, bundle bone is if you by computer, you you know bundle bones uh, come together uh, like that. Bundle bone means it's a bone existing because of tooth. This means that in case the labial bone after tooth extraction, the blood supply cannot um, exist inside because it's a very thin uh, bone. So it gets vessel supply through PDL. And maintain, but after extraction, it also all disappears. So the thinner the bone, the more resorption you would have on your hand. And as you can see here, and because of that, the case of very uh, thick labial bone then it's okay, but in most cases, it's helpful to do immediate placement. So immediate placement can reduce, in other words, resorption. But just immediate placement uh, does not mean um, that you can uh, avoid a lot of resorption. Without CBR, many literature says the bone inevitably results in resorption. Hence, immediate uh, placement always goes hand in hand uh, with GBR, especially for the anterior implant side. So immediate place with GBR, they did on one side and on the other side without GBR. In the GBR group, they saw less uh, soft tissue contour change. So again, doing a GBR with the extraction, immediate implant placement with immediate GBR, aesthetically, stability-wise, in other words, is very much necessary. Depending on the biotops and residual bone thickness, there's a lot of different theories, but thinner the bone, you have to do uh, sufficient GBR. If you ignore all this and think that, you know, I can, you know, do later on implant placement, I will do a bit small GBR and do um, implant placement. If you approach that, especially on the anterior side and whether it be mandial or maxillar side, it's very aesthetic zone and you could have aesthetic 
complications on your hand. So uh, you could have a very serious soft tissue recession and such soft tissue recession uh, could happen when there's inadequate GBR. So you have to be mindful of that. So what uh, is sufficient uh, GBR? Most say the adequate augmentation after sufficient rebounding. If you have at least two millimeters of thickness, they say uh, that's the um, good uh, practice. Then on the anterior side, doing provisionals, is it helpful? So when you do provisional crown, you could reduce recession and you could reduce other problems. Hence, if possible, um, if it's immediate implant placement, it's helpful to uh, do uh, provisionals. Uh, that's what all the literature say. And immediate implant placement and doing provisionals, it could simplify surgical procedures and it could also provide instant aesthetics to patients. Uh, you know, because it's especially anterior without tooth for a few months, it's really uh, hard. And it could also preserve bone and uh, gingival contours. So if possible, immediate placement and provisionals, uh, you know, doing the loading at the same time, uh, they say have a lot of uh, different advantages. So guide surgery is more accurate than you think. So when you do implant placement, depending on the bone situation, times uh, three or steps, but with the guide surgery, the positioning will be accurate. So prosthetic complications or aesthetic complications uh, becomes less. So if possible, on the anterior side, a lot of different journals say uh, the guide surgery is recommended. And for me, also 99.9% .9 I opt for guide surgery. Recently, on the anterior implant side, uh, newest treatment modality have been uh, summarized in this uh, paper and they say if possible provisional restoration is what you need to do and then uh, a traumatic uh, extraction is recommended as much as possible. Then when you place implant, you have to do uh, good bone grafts and do surgical, use surgical guide, put the so customized abutment and the provisional crown relining. So these are the recommended um, practices. So my uh, approach is this. I do immediate placement following tooth extraction, uh, guide surgery for ideal position, excess GBR with xenograft, and pre milled abutment is used because if you buy off the shelf, the top part cannot be sealed. So you have to close the sealing and immediately provisional is um, delivered to have more aesthetically pleasing result and also have more functional benefits for the patient. Then let's look at the implant treatment on anterior maxillar side. I'll show you actual cases. Now for this patient, it was a young uh, patient, number 21 in the central incisor, they had root resorption. It was a male patient and I placed implant and did the guide surgery along with GBR. And as you can see here, root has been already resorbed and uh, extraction was planned like this, and as you can see, the implant uh, positioning was uh, mostly. It's better to go palatal, but if you go too palatal, there could be different issues. So this was the look position that I uh, planned, and after extraction, you can see the resorption uh, was already happening, and as you can see. Soft tissue was already filled, so I uh, took it out, and there was a fenestration defect, and only very thin labial bone remained. Hence, using the guide, I placed implant. As you can see, the gap was rather big, so you have to do sufficient GBR here, and it's xenograft and AOS was used, and I did GBR and using bone tag, I uh, fixed it on the position. And for collagen membrane, I, in case of this, I used membrane because base was big, and if it goes uh, the 
the augmenting coronal part, sometimes there could be no bone if it goes too on the back side. So because of that, with the sufficient GBR, and then I sutured the flap side and I've delivered provisional. And provisional uh, crown is a bit uh, short. If it touches the opposing tooth, and it was extraction site, and on the epix, or three meters would have been fixture uh, strength. And the, if it fixed on the lateral side, uh, there could be a loss. So under occlusion is the key here. After two weeks, the so train healed well, and the healing continued successfully up to six weeks and after the ten weeks. And you see slight resorption of the uh, soft tissue, but uh, the crown will be uh, remade again anyway. So two crowns were made. It was a two uh, young patient in his twenties. So for aesthetics, link abutment was used and zirconia abutment, uh, in other words, used. And after prosthesis was delivered and after six months and three months and up to follow up for two years and you cannot really tell which is implanted and which is natural tooth so form and other things are very much well maintained so CT shows on the buccal side sufficient augmented volume exists uh, which I did and of course it was resorbed to remodeling but still uh, it remained after one year so after that I expect there will be less resorption on the PA side the healing continued successfully and maintained very well now this was the um, result we will see another case for this patient 50s female uh, patient had, who was aesthetically very demanding and there was a lot of severe periodontitis so I had to extract it and use one guide I did GBR immediate implant uh, placement and deliver provisional on the um, x-ray side severely there was a region the implant was uh, very much uh, shaking and palatal bone as you can see did not exist any, any anymore. The apex it was also region, and they built, uh, you know, the bone here was also thin. So I think um, it was very hard to uh, gain um, the uh, fix, fixing strength. So after extraction, simple, you know, I did simple extraction after drilling before I pla did placement on the labial side with the sufficient GBR here. So I did decortication first before delivering implants. So after three months uh, drilling, um, this is just before delivering implant because uh, when you uh, punch uh, the cortical bone, um, you are afraid if you there is a fixture or uh, implant, you would uh, punch hole there too. So if possible, just after drilling, uh, before placing implant, you should do decortication. So GBR covered with membrane, and as you can see, using Xenogress, uh, sufficient GBR, and I sutured up. And here on the um, anterior side, bio uh, type was thin, and on the anterior side, I use very thin um, thread like six o nylon to avoid any um, tearing and uh, whatnot. So this is um, how the provisional delivered everything. As you can see in the follow ups and healing, blight triangle uh, was uh, rather uh, observed uh, to be big. But I delivered um, after 14 wings and used the ring compartment after uh, current delivery. The contact point is up to here. So slowly around here, soft tissue migrates and it's being filled up. And as you can see, it's not really visible. So for a patient in her late 50s, early 60s, it's not much of a, a problem. It's quite aesthetic. And after one year, again, this area, slightly softer recession, it can be observed, but uh, link abutment was used, and zirconia is on the back side, so abutment uh, does not look that ugly. So for this patient, after 
uh, operation. There was a lot of augmentation, but it was reserved. And after a surgery, only three meters millimeters of the bone remain. But this is quite okay, uh, satisfactory, and uh, can support a uh, soft tissue with this, uh, even that bone uh, volume. And a prosthesis was then delivered. Now we looked at the um, anterior maxillar side. We'll now look at the lower part, one case. So for the anterior mandible side, for this patient, uh, we did a clue. Uh, there was retainer, and it's really hard to uh, brush teeth or uh, use even uh, the uh, clean it. But um, there was no bone on the ape, even apex for here. And for you can see it's all moving together and you cannot really uh, you know, use it. So I had to extract everything. And temporary was used. Uh, and I had to focus on aesthetics. Um, so using one guy system, immediate placement, uh, uh, and uh, after extraction, using guide, implant was placed immediately. So on the uh, lateral incisor side on both sides, and xenograft was used for soft GBR, and one feet abutment was used, and the membrane can be um, fixed here, and uh, it's covered the membrane, and bone tick was used to cover it up. And um, I think this is the sausage tech, like test sausage technique that you would uh, are familiar. So it has a tenting effect. So there is enough space to um, preserve the materials. And after that, to it the up without tension, I deliver temporary. And after uh, surgery, two weeks, and after four months, again, there is slight recession that continues. So on this area for aesthetics, temporary, I uh, continually adjusted to follow the uh, form change here. And after final process is delivered, oh, it's, uh, the sh uh, form needs to be like this uh, for aesthetics. And after 13 weeks, prosthetics, the final ones were delivered. And even after four years on the labial side contour uh, remains and its, uh, prosthetics are uh, on a long-term basis um, maintained to be very uh, aesthetic. So, so these are the CT uh, photo and before and after comparison. It looks aesthetic because I think the central incisor where is no implant, but it had sufficient GBR, which has been uh, maintained, and the gingiva height remained the same on the pontic side. And I think that resulted in uh, this making um, all pleasing aesthetic results. So before surgery, after surgery, four years follow up. And so in the uh, graft side, there's a cortical line. So step the contour uh, is rather uh, maintained very well. So as you can see, so anterior mandible and doing GBR, again, uh, mindful of the bone resorption, do sufficient GBR, use one guide system or one fit and one fit abutment and the using provisional surround crown together in terms of aesthetics and healing afterwards and afterwards biological bulk and bones form uh, maintenance. Uh, I think it's all helpful. Um, if you want to learn more, you can join me in the offline lecture. Thank you very much.